One of my favorite hobbies is duck hunting. I go every season at least three to four times. The success to hiding is to look like a bush or tree or woods or leaves or anything but a human being. Blend in because you don't want to be recognized. But God's people want to strip off the things of the world and be seen for good works representing God. Light of the world people, salt of the earth people. A walking disciple in the flesh. Why? Because it glorifies and pleases God. This leads me to one of my favorite verses in the Bible, one that I try to live by every day. It's not easy. It's not a, it is a challenge, and maybe that's why I like it. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Simply put, Paul tells us to abandon the chase for pleasure, possessions, and status, to stop living like everyone else. Instead, he urges us to be transformed from the inside out. Specifically, he writes that we must be changed in how we think, to have our minds renewed so that we can begin to understand God's will for our lives. In Romans 12, 1, Paul addresses his readers as brethren, which assumes that they have experienced the new birth. The old has gone, the new has come, right? Well, maybe. His readers are Christians, just like us. They have believed in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord so that they are no longer living according to their own selfish desires, or at least are striving to do that. Paul is trying to help. In Galatians 1, 4 and 5, he says that the Lord Jesus Christ gave Himself for our sins so that He might rescue us from this present evil age. So, what's wrong with this world? Well, one, th one time there was nothing. It was perfect. But since then, well, you know, watch the news, you'll know. But God has always liked the people who were set apart for Him. Different. And I like that. I'm striving at it. And Paul says that we get transformed by the renewing of our mind. So what's wrong with the human mind anyway? Things made of clay shrink, crack, break, and can lose their form if they don't stay molded on the wheel of the Maker. Watch the news. But as Christians, all would say that we want to change so that we will be more like Christ. And yet, when it comes right down to it, being like Christ can be challenging in this world that's easy to conform in, in terms of our character, our behavior, our thoughts, and intentions. In addressing this question of, What's wrong with the human mind? Let's be honest, the playing field is not level. Some people have a much more difficult battle than others do. If you grew up in a home where there was frequent conflict or where your parents split up or you were verbally, physically, or sexually abused, you've got more challenges to deal with than those who grew up in a stable Christian home. Or if you've fallen into certain sins, such as drug or alcohol abuse, or certain sexual sins, you may have a tough battle to renew and change. But while the battle may be more difficult, the good news is that the Bible promises change to all who have trusted in Christ and follow after. The right motive for wanting to change is that you have experienced God's abundant mercy. Now. Out of gratitude for His mercy and out of a heartfelt desire to please the God who rescued us from judgment, we want our life to bring glory to Him. Our response to mercy? Be different than the world. I think the Phillips Bible translation captures the meaning of our verse like this. Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold. But let God remold your minds from within so that you may prove in practice that the plan of God for you is good, meets all His demands, and moves toward the goal of true maturity. So the primary source for changing our minds or thinking is God's Word. 
If we are not saturating our mind with God's Word, we will not change for the better. We must come to know God as He has revealed Himself in His Word. The world is always trying to distort our view of God. Even David, the man after God's own heart, after he had written many of the Psalms, was capable of adultery, deception, and murder. Wow, do we still have a chance? Yes, thank you, Jesus. We need a regular habit of reading through the Bible over and over again to get this stubborn mind back to God's thinking, not our own thinking. My wife and I have a morning coffee and Bible reading before anything else every morning, first thing in the morning, and we find it is still not enough to combat the world's influence in our lives. We still want to be different. Well, the result of transformation is we will know God's will. The will of God here does not refer to decisions like whether you should quit a job and take another, which college you should attend, or if you should move. I think it's much simpler. God's will is to be faithful in marriage, in college, in career, in church. Our transfer transformation must be faithful in all things. So in conclusion, I think our dilemma is that we love change and hate it at the same time. What we want for the most part is for things to remain the same but get better for us. For things to get better in life, we must change. To change, we must be involved in the process of renewing our minds by God's Word. Begin a daily time in the Word if you're not already doing that. Aim at reading five good Christian books this year that increase your faith. Find a mature mentor who can help you in being transformed. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 2, 5, take every thought captive to make it obedient to Christ. We've got to be different than the world is, but our efforts will be worth it. Let me lead us in prayer. Father God, I pray we can declare authority over our thoughts and choose to dwell on things that are true, noble, and pure in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God, that it is your desire to answer and reveal to us things in your word and spirit. We choose today to put off old ways by thinking and pulling down and demolishing every argument that tries to rise up against the truth of your word. In his name I pray and amen. Blessings to you as you live in the light of eternity today.